good evening all yesterday uh, we were discussing the chapter uh, inverse trigonometric functions so in this session we will be continuing uh, inverse trigonometric functions so before that uh, we want to recall uh, what all we studied yesterday okay so i have told you about principal value branches of inverse trigonometric functions okay we have six inverse trigonometric functions and we uh, learned about the principal value branches right Sorry for the interruption. So uh, we'll be continuing uh, inverse trigonometric function. So before that, we shall recall the principal value branches of each inverse trigonometric function. Okay. Uh, so I'll show you the table uh, of domain and ranges of different inverse trigonometric function. Okay. So here is the table. You can see that uh, the domain as well as the ranges of different inverse trigonometric functions are given. Okay, uh, for in order to remember, for some people it will be difficult to memorize this as it is. Uh, you can see a pattern here. Uh, it is just for uh, memorizing uh, the range. Okay, we need uh, we need to know the range values of each functions to solve the problem. So uh, just to memorize, you can see that uh, there is a pattern followed by sine inverse, um, cosec inverse, as well as tan inverse. Right. We can group sine inverse then tan inverse then uh, reciprocal of sine okay comma pi by 2 everything is minus pi by 2 pi by 2 the only difference is in uh, whether minus pi by 2 pi by 2 is included in that or not included that is in the case of sine inverse you can see that minus it is closed interval minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 okay here minus pi by 2 as well as pi by 2 is included in the range of sine inverse now come to tan inverse what is it the range of tan inverse is open interval minus pi by 2 pi by 2 okay now if you observe cosec inverse, what is the range of cosec inverse? It is nothing but closed. And you can say that. Um, one minute. Can you hear me? Hello, am I audible?
So am I audible to you all? Okay, cosec inverse, uh, you can say the range of cosec inverse is closed interval minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 minus what is in between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2, it is 0, right? So we are removing that 0. Closed interval minus pi by 2, pi by 2 minus 0. Okay, so in this way, you can easily remember the PBB or the principal value branches of uh, inverse trigonometric functions. Similarly, we can group the other three. Isn't it? So I'm erasing it. So uh, we are going to group the other three. Okay. Uh, that is cos inverse. Then comes uh, cot inverse. Then the reciprocal of cos, right? Seek inverse. Okay. You can see the pattern here. There is also cos inverse is closed interval 0 pi. Then cot inverse is nothing but open interval 0 pi. Then seek inverse is closed interval 0 pi and what we, what is the uh, middle portion of 0 and pi that is pi by 2 right so we have to remove that point pi by 2 in this way you can easily remember the principal value branches of each of the inverse trigonometric function okay is that clear to you all
okay uh, so i was facing some issues on the network that's why i stopped the class okay we can continue uh, we were doing the problems related to the uh, principal values of inverse trigonometric function right so we have completed uh, until problem number 5 in the exercise 2.1 we'll be continuing the remaining okay so today's first question is uh, it is number 6 in exercise 2.1 question number 6 okay tan inverse of minus 1 we have to find out the principal value of tan inverse of minus 1 okay so first of all we have to let tan inverse of minus 1 be theta isn't it so according to the definition of inverse trigonometric function we can write this tan inverse of minus 1 equal to theta as Minus one is equal to tan theta. Okay. Now we have to check for what value of tan will give you one. Okay. For the, for the the value of theta for which the tan function will give you one. Okay. What is that? Tan pi by four. Tan pi by four will give you one. Right. Tan pi by four is equal to one. So minus tan pi by four instead of one, I am writing. tan pi by 4 okay minus tan by pi by 4 is equal to tan theta and here you can see that it is positive in the right hand side it is positive so in order to make both sides positive we have to apply a property of tan right what was that tan of minus x is equal to minus tan x and vice versa minus tan x can be written as tan of minus x that is the outside minus can be taken to the angle inside angle okay so that is tan of minus tan of pi by 4 can be written as tan of minus pi by 4 that is equal to tan theta okay so what will be the value of theta theta is nothing but minus pi by 4 now what we have to do we have to check whether the theta that we have obtained occurs in the pvb or the principal value branch of tan inverse so what is the principal value branch of tan inverse the principal value branch of tan inverse is open minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 isn't it so what can you conclude from this does minus pi by 4 belongs to this interval this varies between minus 90 and plus 90 minus pi by 4 means minus 45 degree so we can say that minus 4 pi by 4 belongs to this interval minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 is that clear to you so we can conclude that the value the principal value of tan inverse of minus 1 is nothing but minus pi by 4 okay is that clear to you all so we started uh, by uh, putting tan inverse of minus 1 as theta so we got by definition of inverse trigonometric function minus 1 is equal to tan theta so uh, for for uh, one uh, we substitute the value tan pi by 4 because tan pi by 4 is 1 so instead of 1 i am giving tan pi by 4 in order to make both side positive i am applying the property tan of minus x is equal to minus tan x so minus tan pi by 4 became tan of minus pi by 4 that is equal to tan theta so we got that theta is equal to minus pi by 4 and we che check that whether this theta belongs to the pvb of tan inverse here the tan inverse the pvb of tan inverse is minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 and this uh, theta belongs to that interval okay so we found out the principal value of tan inverse of minus 1 now the second question is sec inverse of 2 by root 3 okay we have to find out the value the principal value of sec inverse of 2 by root 3 again sec inverse of 2 by root 3 put sec inverse of 2 by root 3 as theta so we can write 2 by root 3 as sec theta right now we have to check for which value of theta for the function sec will give you 2 by root 3 okay for that what we have to do we know the standard values of uh, sin cos tan etc right so sec is the reciprocal of which function 
it is a reciprocal of cos function so you check cos theta is equal to which value of theta will give you cos theta as root 3 by 2 okay since it is a sec is a reciprocal of cos we can consider instead of 2 by root 3 i can write to here it is 2 by root 3 is equal to sec theta isn't it if i take the reciprocal here 1 by sec theta this will also we have to take the reciprocal in the left side also right so it will become root 3 by 2 isn't it here 1 by sec theta is nothing but cos theta okay so we have to find out for which value of theta uh, will the cos function become root 3 by 2 so which is that value cos theta is equal to root 3 by 2 means theta is equal to theta is equal to nothing but pi by 6 that is 30 degree right so we got that it is 2 by root 3 is equal to sec theta that is 2 by root 3 is nothing but c pi by 6. Okay, c pi by 6. So, c pi by 6 is equal to c theta. So, the value of theta is equal to pi by 6. Now, what we have to do? We have to check whether this theta belongs to the PVB of c. Okay, we have to check whether this value of theta belongs to the PVB of c. What is the PVB of c? It is a reciprocal of cos, right? So, the uh, PVB of sec is uh, closed interval 0 pi minus set pi by 2, right? This is the PVB of sec. Now, we have to check whether this theta belongs to this particular interval. Pi by 6 means 30 degree. 30 degree belongs to this interval, right? So, we can conclude that pi by 6 belongs to closed interval 0 pi minus set pi by 2. So, we can say that the value, principal value of sec inverse of 2 by root 3 is nothing but pi by 6. Sec inverse of 2 by root 3 is nothing but pi by 6. Okay. Now, next question is cot inverse of root 3. Okay. Cot inverse of root 3. Let cot inverse of root 3 be theta. So, root 3 is equal to, we can write it as cot theta, right? Since cot, cot inverse of root 3 is equal to theta, here sin inverse of, if sin inverse of x is equal to y, we can write x as sin y. We can write x as sin y. Okay. Similarly, cot inverse of root 3 equal to theta implies root 3 is equal to cot theta. And we know the values of tan, right? Standard values of tan. So, we can compare it with tan. Here it is given cot theta is equal to root 3. So, in terms of tan, how we can write? We can write it as 1 by root 3 is equal to tan theta. So, which value of uh, tan will give you 1 by root 3? Which value of tan will give you 1 by root 3? It is nothing but pi by 6, right? Tan pi by 6 is equal to 1 by root 3. Tan pi by 6 is equal to 1 by root 3, which implies cot pi by 6 is equal to root 3. Cot pi by 6 is equal to root 3. So, instead of root 3, I am going to replace it with cot pi by 6. So, I can write instead of root 3, cot pi by 6, that is equal to cot theta. Cot pi by 6 is equal to cot theta. From this, what can you understand? Theta is equal to pi by 6. Theta is equal to pi by 6. Okay, is that clear to you? Now we have to check whether this theta belongs to the PVB of cot inverse. Okay, so what is the PVB of cot inverse? What is the PVB of cot inverse? Open interval 0 pi. The PVB of cot inverse is open interval 0 pi. Does this pi by 6 belongs to this interval? Definitely, pi by 6 belongs to open interval 0 pi. So, we can conclude that cot inverse of the principal value of cot inverse of root 3 is pi by 6.
Now, cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2. We have to find out the value of cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2. So, let cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2 be theta. Okay. So, we can write this as minus 1 by root 2 is equal to cos theta. Minus 1 by root 2 is equal to cos theta. Now, we have to check for which value of cos that uh, for which value of theta for the function cos will give you 1 by root 2. Okay. So, uh, which value will give you 1 by root 2 for cos theta? It is pi by 4, right? Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. So, I can write instead of 1 by root 2, cos pi by 4. So, minus cos pi by 4 is equal to cos theta. But here we cannot use the property that we used in the previous case. We use tan of minus x is equal to minus tan x, right? In order to make it positive here, we cannot use it because uh, the cos, the property of cos is that cos of minus x is cos x itself. It is positive only. It, it doesn't become negative function. So we cannot use that property here to solve this. So instead, yesterday we used a reduction formula, right? In order to make the cos function positive. So, we have to check the quadrant, right? Here, all in the first quadrant, all the uh, functions, all the trigonometric functions will be positive. We are seek and this reciprocal cosec. Si sorry, sine and its reciprocal cosec will be positive. And here, tan and its reciprocal code will be positive. And here, cos and sec will be positive. So, these, uh, I'm sure that you might be familiar with all the signs of the, of the different quadrants. Okay, now uh, we have to get minus cos pi by 4, isn't it? Here every function is positive. Now you move on to the second quadrant. Here, here we can say that cos is negative. So we can choose that quadrant. Here what is the angle here? The angle notation is nothing but pi minus x or pi minus theta. Okay, here you can see that it is pi by 4. So we can re rewrite this as my, sorry. It's not minus. We can rewrite this as cos of pi minus pi by 4. Okay. Cos of pi minus pi by 4. That is equivalent to minus cos of pi by 4. Okay. So, that is equal to cos theta. So, what is the value of theta? Theta is equal to pi minus pi by 4. We can simplify this, isn't it? 4 pi minus, we can take the LCM. That is 4 pi minus pi. That is 3 pi by 4. Okay, it is 3 pi by 4. Okay, we got the value as 3 pi by 4. Now, we have to check whether this 3 pi by 4 belongs to the PVB of cos. Okay, we have to check whether this theta belongs to the principal value branch of uh, cos inverse. So, what, what was the principal value branch of cos inverse? It is nothing but closed interval 0 pi. So, 3 by 3 pi by 4 belongs to this, right? How will you uh, understand the 3 into pi? We can write it as 180 by 4. So, it gets cancelled here. So, 4, then it becomes uh, 5, 45. 3 into 45 is 135 degree. 135 degree belongs to 0 pi, right? 0 pi means it varies from 0 to 180. So, 135 degree belongs to that interval. So, we can say that the principal value of cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2 is 3 pi by 4. It is 3 pi by 4. Next question is cosec inverse of minus root 2. Let cosec inverse of minus root 2 be theta. Cosec inverse of minus root 2 be theta. So, we can write this as minus root 2 is equal to cosec theta. 
ओके माइनस रूट टू इज इक्वल टू कोसीक थीटा दिस कैन आल्सो बी रिटन एज कोसीक थीटा इज इक्वल टू सो वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट फॉर व्हिच वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा फॉर द फंक्शन कोसीक विल गिव रूट टू इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट इफ कोसीक थीटा इज रूट टू वी कैन राइट दिस एज 1 बाय कोसीक थीटा इज इक्वल टू 1 बाय रूट टू 1 बाय कोसीक थीटा इज नथिंग बट साइन थीटा साइन थीटा इज इक्वल टू 1 बाय रूट टू so which value for uh, theta make the sine function 1 by root 2 it is nothing but sine pi by 4 sine pi by 4 is equal to 1 by root 2 isn't it so we can say that cosec pi by 4 is equal to root 2 okay so instead of this root 2 i am writing minus cosec pi by 4 minus cosec pi by 4 is equal to cosec theta okay again you can see observe a minus here right so we have to uh, uh, make it positive make both side positive right so we have to apply the property that is cosec of minus x is equal to cosec of minus x is equal to minus cosec x cosec of minus x is equal to Minus cosec x. So minus cosec pi by four can be written as cosec of minus pi by four. That is equal to cosec theta. So we can conclude that theta is equal to minus pi by four. Now what we have to do? We have to check whether this minus pi by four belongs to the PVB of cosec inverse. So what was the PVB of cosec inverse? What was the P P V B of cosec inverse? It was closed interval minus pi by two comma pi by two minus set zero, right? So minus pi by four belongs to this interval. Minus pi by four belongs to minus pi by two comma pi by two minus set zero. So what we can conclude? Cosec inverse of minus root two is equal to minus pi by four. Now moving on to the eleventh question. Eleventh question: You have to find out the value of tan inverse of one plus cos inverse of minus one by two plus sine inverse of minus one by two. Okay, we have to find out the value of tan inverse of one plus cos inverse of minus one by two plus sine inverse of minus one by two. Okay, for that you have to split this into three parts and find out the principal uh, values of each trigonometric function. Sorry, inverse trigonometric function. Okay, so first of all, you consider tan inverse of one b theta. Let tan inverse of one be theta. Then one is equal to tan theta, right? So one can be written as tan pi by four. Since tan pi by four is one, we can write. Uh, instead of one tan pi by four, tan pi by four is equal to tan theta. From this, you can uh, you get that pi by four is equal to theta. Now, what you have to do? We have to check whether this pi by four belongs to the PVB, isn't it? So the PVB is nothing but minus pi by two comma pi by two. So clearly, pi by four belongs to this interval, isn't it? So we can say that tan inverse of one is equal to. Tan inverse of one is equal to pi by four. Okay, now consider the second part. Cos inverse of minus one by two. Okay, cos inverse of minus one by two. Again, put this as theta. Okay, so minus one by two is equal to cos theta. So which value of cos is one uh, by two? It is cos sixty, right? So we we can write instead of one by two, we can write cos pi by three is equal to cos theta. Now we what we have to do? We have to make it positive, right? So 
So we obtain that minus cos pi by 3 is equal to cos theta. Right. So in order to make it positive, what we have to do? We have to apply the reduction formula. Since that property is not applicable to cos function, we have to use a reduction formula. So here uh, again, uh, here every uh, function is positive. In the second quadrant, it is sine, uh, sine and cosec. Here tan and cot and here it is cot and uh, cos and sec. Right. So in the second quadrant, we can observe that cos is negative. In the second quadrant, we can say that cos is negative. So what is the angle here? It is pi minus theta. The angle representation of second quadrant is pi minus theta. So we can convert this as cos of pi minus pi by 3. Okay, here cos is negative. So we have to convert this into a positive value. That's why we are taking like this cos of pi minus pi by 3 will give you minus cos pi by 3 itself. Okay, that is equal to cos theta. So what is the value of theta? This can be simplified, right? Cos of 3 pi minus 2 pi, the LCM is 3. So 3 pi minus pi, that will give you 2 pi. 2 pi by 3 is equal to cos theta. So theta is equal to 2 pi by 3. Theta is equal to 2 pi by 3. And we have to check whether this 2 pi by 3 belongs to the PVB, right? So the PVB is nothing but closed interval 0 pi. And 2 pi by 3 means 2 into 180 by 3. That is 60, which means 120. So 120 belongs to closed interval 0 pi. So we can say that the value of uh, cos inverse of minus 1 by 2. Cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 is nothing but 2 pi by 3. Okay. Is that clear to you all? Cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 is equal to 2 by 3. Now, the third part is sine inverse of minus 1 by 2. Sine inverse of minus 1 by 2. Let sine inverse of minus 1 by 2 be theta. So, we can write minus 1 by 2 is equal to sine theta. Right? We can write minus 1 by 2 is equal to sine theta. Now, consider which value of theta will give make the function uh, sine function 1 by 2 sine 30 degree is equal to 1 by 2, right? That is sine pi by 6 is equal to 1 by 2. So instead of 1 by 2, I am writing sine pi by 6. Sine pi by 6 is equal to sine theta. Here we can use a property because sine of minus x is equal to minus sine x. So minus sine pi by 6 can be written as sine of minus pi by 6 that is equal to sine theta. So the value of theta is equal to minus pi by 6. Value of theta is minus pi by 6. Right. Now we have to check whether this minus pi by 6 belongs to the PVB of sine. Right. Sine inverse. Sorry. Sine inverse. So what was the PVB of sine inverse? It is closed interval minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2. And clearly minus pi by 6 belongs to this interval. Right, minus 30 belongs to in between, minus 30 lies in between this, right? So we can say that sine inverse of minus 1 by 2 is equal to minus pi by 6. Okay, so we obtained the values of three inverse trigonometric function given in the equation. Now first, uh, you have to rewrite that equation. Sorry, the question tan inverse 1 plus cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 plus sine inverse of minus 1 by 2. Here, tan inverse of 1 was pi by 4. Then, cos inverse of minus 1 by 2, we obtained it as 2 pi by 3. Okay. Then, uh, sine inverse of minus 1 by 2 was minus pi by 6. Okay. Is that clear to you all? Now, what we have to do? We have to simplify it. We have to find out the LCM. LCM of 4, 3 and 6 is 12, right? So, uh, you have to multiply in order to make it 12. Uh, we are, You have to multiply the numerator also with 3, right? 4 into 3 will give you 12. So, uh, pi into 3, the numerator will become 3 pi. And here it is 4 into 4, right? 2 pi into 4, here also into 4. Okay, so it will become 8 pi. Then minus is here, then 2 pi. So what is the value of uh, 3 pi plus 8 pi minus 2 pi? That is 9 pi by 12. 
again we can simplify it isn't it 3 pi by 4 so the value of tan inverse of 1 plus cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 plus sin inverse of minus 1 by 2 is 3 pi by 4 okay now in your textbook there is an uh, a question uh, that is uh, sine inverse of x is equal to y then what is the value of y that is they are asking the range of y if sine inverse of x is equal to y that means it is the inverse uh, trigonometric function sine inverse so we have already learned about the principal value branch or the range of sine inverse right so they are asking just the range of that function and we already know that it is uh, closed interval minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. So this can also be written as minus pi by 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi by 2. Since pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 is included in the domain, we have to include equal to less than or equal to sign. So y varies in between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Moving on to the 14th question. That is tan inverse of root 3 minus sec inverse of minus 2 is equal to. You have to find out the value of tan inverse of root 3 minus sec inverse of minus 2. So again we are splitting this into two parts. Tan inverse of root 3 is equal to theta. That means root 3 is equal to tan theta. Right. Root 3 is equal to tan theta. Which means uh, which value of tan will give you root 3? It is nothing but tan pi by 3, right, tan 60, right, tan 60 is root 3. So, tan pi by 3 is equal to root 3. So, I am writing instead of root 3, tan pi by 3. Tan pi by 3 is equal to tan theta, which implies theta is equal to pi by 3. And does this pi by 3 belongs to the principle PVB of tan inverse? What was PVB? Tan inverse PVB was open interval minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 and clearly pi by 3 belongs to minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 right so we got that tan inverse of root 3 is equal to pi by 3 tan inverse of root 3 is equal to pi by 3 now uh, moving on to the second part that is sec inverse right we have to find out the value of sec inverse of minus 2 so, sec inverse, let sec inverse of minus 2 be theta. So, we can write this as minus 2 is equal to sec theta. Okay. Since sec theta is minus 2, uh, sec theta, we have to find out the value of theta for which the function sec will give you 2. So, sec theta is equal to 2. Right. Which means 1 by sec theta is equal to 1 by 2. Right. So, what is the reciprocal of sec? That is nothing but cos. Cos theta is equal to 1 by 2. Cos theta is equal to 1 by 2. So, which is the value for theta of theta for which the function cos becomes 1 by 2? It is cos pi by 3. Isn't it? Cos 60 is 1 by 2. So, cos pi by 3 is 1 by 2. Which means sec pi by 3 is 2 sec pi by 3 is 2. So, we can write instead of 2, sec pi by 3. Instead of 2, we can write sec pi by 3. Sec pi by 3 is equal to sec theta. Okay. Since again, this is a reciprocal of cos, we cannot apply the property uh, as in the previous cases. That is, we have to find out the sign. Uh, we have to uh, reduce it using the reduction formula. Okay. So, Again, we have to find out the sign of this function. Hmm? So, in the first quadrant, all the functions are positive. In the second quadrant, we know that cos and sec is negative. So, we have got the quadrant. And what is the angle in the quadrant? General representation of angle in that quadrant is pi minus theta. Right? So here it is pi. So, in order to obtain the angles in the second quadrant, we have to subtract some value. Isn't it? Subtract some angle value from pi. That's why here the angle measurement is pi minus theta. Okay. So, we can convert this as 
sec of pi minus pi by 3. sec of pi minus pi by 3. That is equal to sec theta. So we can write sec of 3 pi minus pi, right? Sec of 2 pi by 3 is equal to sec theta. So what is the value of theta? Theta is equal to 2 pi by 3. Theta is equal to 2 pi by 3. Okay, now we have to check whether this 2 pi by 3 belongs to the interval, uh, sorry, the PVB of sec inverse. So the PVB of sec inverse was closed interval 0 pi, but you have to remove the point pi, sorry, the set pi by 2. Okay, so 2 pi by 3 belongs to this interval, right? 2 into, you can do it as a homework. 2 pi by 3 belongs to that interval. So we can say that the value sec inverse of minus 2 is equal to 2 pi by 3. Okay. Now we have to rewrite that question. Question was tan inverse of root 3. We have to find out the value of tan inverse of root 3 minus sec inverse of minus 2. Okay. We have to find out the value of tan inverse of root 3 minus sec inverse of minus 2. We obtained it as pi by 3. Then now sec inverse of minus 2 is 2 pi by 3. So Solving this, we get it is minus pi by 3. Okay. Okay, so have you all understood this section? We have completed exercise 2.1. I hope everything is clear to you. Okay, so uh, we have one more section in this chapter that is called as properties of inverse trigonometric function. Okay, it is the properties of inverse trigonometric function. Actually, after rationalization of your textbook, uh, you need to study only this property. This property is actually simple. If you study for one, uh, one function, you will get the remaining function. Okay, that is the property is nothing but sin inverse of sin theta is equal to theta. Sin inverse of sin theta will be theta. For example, if sin inverse of uh, sin pi by 2 is given, okay, sin inverse of sin pi by 2 is given, then what will be the value of this? It is nothing but pi by 2. Okay, sin inverse and sin becomes the identity function. That's what happening there. Sin inverse or sin theta is equal to theta. So you have to study this property. Okay. Sin inverse or sin theta is equal to theta. Here you can see that for all theta belongs to closed interval minus pi by 2. Pi by 2 means they are given the, uh, uh, the interval of theta. Okay. Theta can take only the uh, values in between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. That is given there. Okay. It is the uh, domain of theta. Here also you can see that cos inverse of cos theta is equal to theta. Then tan inverse of tan theta is also theta. Cot inverse of cot, sorry, it is cot theta. Cot inverse of cot theta is equal to theta. Then sec inverse of sec theta is theta. Similarly, cosec inverse of cosec theta is also theta. Okay. And we can uh, say it in reverse also. Okay, here... In that case, sine inverse of sine theta was theta. Similarly, reverse sine of sine inverse x is also x. Cos of cos inverse x is x. Tan of tan inverse x is x. Then cot of cot inverse x is x. Then sec of sec inverse x is x. As well as cosec of cosec inverse x is also x. Okay. So you need to uh, know these identities as well as the identities in the uh, first year. Okay, you have studied so many identities related to trigonometry functions, right? Do you all remember those uh, identity? We need 
those identities in order to solve the problems in this section. Okay. So we are uh, moving on to the exercise 2.2. Uh, it is uh, mainly solved using the identities and the uh, trigonometry function that is from the first year and the properties uh, property that I mentioned now, right now. Okay, we are using uh, those identities in order to solve the problems in that section. So first one is the example in your textbook. That is important. Sign inverse, uh, show that they are given that, show that. Show that sine inverse of sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square is equal to 2 sine inverse x. Okay, we have to show that sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square is equal to 2 sine inverse x. And they are also given the domain. Uh, this uh, you don't need to consider this. Uh, this just means that the function is valid only in that interval. Uh, it the x values can be only vary from minus one by root two to one by root two. That's the only that is the function is valid only in that particular interval. That's it. So we have to show that sine inverse of two x into root of one minus x square is equal to two sine inverse x. So what we have to prove? We have to prove LHS is equal to RHS. For that, we are going to use the identities that we have st uh, studied in the trigonometry function as well as the property that we have studied now. Okay, for that I am uh, considering, uh, let us start from the LHS, okay. LHS. What is LHS? Sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square. Because if you take RHS, you cannot apply any identity into solve that problem right so you consider sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus start from that sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square okay so here i'm uh, giving a value for x let x be uh, sine theta let x be sine theta okay i'm giving x is equal to sine theta so here from this we can write sine inverse x is equal to theta using the definition of inverse we can write sine inverse of x is equal to theta. Now what I have go I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this x value here. Okay. So it was sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square and we have taken x as is equal to x as sine theta. Why I uh, took sine theta? Because it is all in terms of sine. Right, left hand, left hand side as well as in right hand side, it is sine inverse. And we have uh, studied a property that sine inverse of sine x is equal to x. Right. So in order to make uh, this portion as sine uh, sine x, then only we can apply that property. Right. So uh, I'm taking x as sine theta. So sine inverse of two into sine theta into root of one minus sine square theta. So, did you understood what I have done? I have put x is equal to, I have put x is equal to sine theta and substituted in the left hand side of that equation. That is sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square. I have given in place of x sine theta. That is sine inverse 2 sine theta into root of 1 minus sine square theta. Now, what can you say about this root of 1 minus sine square theta? Here, we have to apply the trigonometric identities in the previous year. Okay. What was that? Sine square theta plus cos square theta is 1. Right. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So we can write 1 minus sine square theta. 1 minus sine square theta is equal to cos square theta. From this we can write 1 minus sine square theta is equal to cos square theta. That is I have uh, taken the sine square theta to that side. 
So we get we got that one minus sine square theta is equal to cos square theta. So root of one minus sine square theta is equal to root cos square theta, which means cos theta. Right. So instead of root of one minus sine square theta, I can write cos theta. Sine inverse of two sine theta into cos theta. Sine inverse of two sine theta into cos theta. Okay. Again, we have an identity using this two sine theta cos theta. What was that? Sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cos theta. What was that? Sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cos theta. So here we can write sine inverse of sine two theta. Sine inverse of sine two theta. And using the property. Now can we apply the property that we have studied now? Sine inverse of sine x is nothing but x itself. Here in place of x you can see two theta, right? So sine inverse of sine two theta will become two theta. But you have uh, you should not stop here because the questions were uh, question was an x right question was in terms of x so you have to convert this theta into uh, x function okay that is we have put x is equal to sine theta so theta is, will be sine inverse x we have put x is equal to sine theta so theta is sine inverse x so here you have to substitute the value of theta that is nothing but two sine inverse x. Now, what was the RHS of the question? RHS was 2 sine inverse, right? So, we have got the RHS. So, we have proved LHS is equal to RHS, right? I hope this question is clear to you all. Now, the second example. Okay. Now, I'm moving on to the second example. It is sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square is equal to 2 cos inverse x. Sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square is equal to 2 cos inverse x. You have to prove it. And they have given the uh, domain of the function that is uh, minus 1 by root 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. Okay. Here also I am starting with LHS. LHS is sine inverse of 2x into root of 1 minus x square. Now we have to put a value instead of uh, x, okay, in order to make this portion as sine. But here you can see that in the right hand side it is in uh, cos. So I am taking x as cos theta. Okay, I am taking x as cos theta. So sine inverse of 2 into cos theta into root of 1 minus cos square theta instead of x i have taken it as cos theta so uh, substitute that value in the right hand side of that question sin inverse of 2 cos theta into root of 1 minus cos square theta so root of 1 minus cos square theta will become 2 cos theta this will become sin theta okay so in the previous question root of 1 minus sin square theta became cos theta Similarly, root of 1 minus cos square theta becomes sine theta using the same identity. Okay, I'm not uh, solving that. Root of 1 minus cos square theta becomes sine theta. So again, we have got that sine inverse of, this is the equation of sine 2 theta, right? This is the equation of sine 2 theta. Hmm? So we can write sine inverse of sine 2 theta. So by the property of inverse, trigonometry sine inverse of sine x is equal to x here instead of x it is 2 theta so it will become 2 theta and now we have to substitute the value of theta that is nothing but theta is equal to from this we can write from this equation we can write theta is equal to cos inverse x so 2 into cos inverse x that was the rhs that was the rhs of the question so we have again proved LHS is equal to RHS. So we have got the answer for that also. I hope every, everybody understand this. Now we are moving on to the exercise questions. Okay, 2.2 exercise question. The first question is, 
3 sin inverse x. We have to prove 3 sin inverse x is equal to sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cube. We have to prove 3 sin inverse x is equal to sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cube. Okay, here also we have to apply the identity that we studied in trigonometry as well as the property. Okay, so here uh, you can see that um, it is sine inverse of something, uh, some function in terms of x, right? It is an independent function of x. So we are going to consider the RHS of this uh, particular question. Why we are considering RHS? Because here it is 3 sine inverse x. We, ha we don't um, have to reduce that side. So, uh, here only we can apply the identity. So, I'm considering RHS. I'm starting with RHS. Okay. That is sine inverse of 3x minus 4x cube. Sine inverse of 3x minus 4x cube. Now, uh, put x is equal to. Here also it is sine inverse. Here also sine inverse. So, in order to apply the property, uh, sine inverse of sine x is equal to x. We need this value as sine in terms of sine, right? So I am putting x is equal to sine theta. So theta will become sine inverse x. Theta will become sine inverse x. So instead of sine inverse of 3 into x, I can write 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. Isn't it? Sine inverse of 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. So this can be rewritten as sine inverse of this is the equation of which identity, which trigonometric identity. Do you remember the identity? It was sine 3 theta. Sine 3 theta is 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. Okay. Sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. Here it is saying. Right. So, we can write this as sine 3 theta. Now, can we apply the property of inverse? Definitely, we can apply, right? Sine inverse of sine x will become x. Here, in terms of x, is, it is 3 theta. So, this will become 3 theta. Sine inverse of sine 3 theta will become 3 theta. Okay. So, in order to make it a function of x, we have to substitute the value of theta. Right. So here from this, you have already got that theta is equal to sine inverse x. Since x is equal to sine theta, theta is sine inverse x. So we can substitute that. 3 into sine inverse x. This was the LHS of the question. Right. 3 sine inverse x was the LHS. So we have again proved RHS is equal to LHS. Now, the second question, 3 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x. 3 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x. And uh, they have given the domain x belongs to minus 1 by 2, 1. Okay, in that particular interval, this function is, uh, this property is valid. 3 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x. Again, we are starting with the RHS only. Here, uh, we have, uh, we don't have anything to solve, right? So, we are starting with RHS cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x. And uh, since uh, both side has cos inverse, we are uh, putting x as cos theta. Okay, I am uh, taking x as cos theta. So, starting with RHS, it becomes cos inverse of 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. Is that clear to you? Is that clear to you? Cos inverse. Uh, I am taking x is equal to cos theta. So, uh, starting from the right hand side, uh, I am uh, putting value... Uh, cos theta in, in uh, the places of x. Okay, cos inverse of 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. So, uh, do you remember this identity in the trigonometry? It is nothing but cos 3 theta. Okay, so cos inverse of cos 3 theta. 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta is cos 3 theta. So, this uh, again we can apply the uh, 
property of inverse that is cos inverse of cos inverse of cos x is equal to x cos inverse of cos x is equal to x so here in terms of x it is 3 theta so cos inverse of cos 3 theta will become 3 theta and we have substituted x as cos theta right x as cos theta from this you can write theta value of theta theta is equal to cos inverse x so instead of theta i am writing 3 cos inverse x so this was the lhs of the question so again we have we started from rhs and that uh, became equal to the lhs so we have solved that problem is that clear to you all Uh, now uh, we are moving on to a different uh, type of problem that is write the following in write the following this is different from the previous one okay write the following in the simplest form write the following in the simplest form that is they'll be given a uh, you are given a question you have to uh, reduce it into the very simplest form by using the properties of inverse as well as the different uh, trigonometric identities that you studied in the first year. The first thing you have to be thorough with uh, while studying this chapter is the identities of uh, trigonometric function. You should be thorough with that. Then you should be thorough with the principal value branches of inverse trigonometric function. Okay, then you have to study the uh, property of inverse trigonometric function. That is easy actually. That is nothing but sine inverse of sine x is x. Or we can say that sine of sine inverse x is equal to x. Which is, this is applied for all the trigonometry function. Okay. So this uh, you should be thorough with all the identities. Then only you can solve this problem. If you are thorough with, us, uh, with that identity and if you practice it with uh, many problems, you will be uh, this uh, section will become easy for you. Okay. So the first question is tan inverse of root of 1 plus x square minus 1 by x tan inverse of root of 1 plus x square minus 1 by x and they have given the domain x not equal to 0 x cannot take the value 0 okay so we have to reduce this into its simplest form so what i am going to do is that since we are mainly dependent on the inver property of uh, inverse that is tan inverse of tan theta is equal to theta we have to make somehow we have to make this portion as in terms of tan okay so for that i am uh, taking uh, the x value as uh, tan theta okay i am taking x value as tan theta so from this you can write theta is equal to tan inverse x theta is equal to tan inverse x now what you have to do you have to substitute the value of tan inverse in the equation question that is root of 1 plus x square in, the, in the place of x square you can uh, put tan theta right. So tan square theta minus 1 by tan theta. Okay root of 1 plus tan square theta minus 1 by tan theta. Is that clear to you? We have just substitute the, substituted the value of x in the question. So tan inverse of root of 1 plus tan square theta minus 1 by tan theta. Now what is the value of root of 1 plus tan square theta? Again you have to apply the identity. 1 plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta. What is it? 1 plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta. So what is root of 1 plus tan square theta? root of 1 plus tan square theta is root of c square theta right root of c square theta so root of c square theta is nothing but c theta okay root of 1 plus tan square theta is c theta so here you can write tan inverse of c theta minus 1 by tan theta tan inverse of c theta minus 1 by tan theta 
now what i'm going to do is that i make i'm going to make some adjustments in order to make that portion tan in terms of tan okay so uh, instead of sec theta i'm uh, going to write it as 1 by cos theta okay sec theta can be written as 1 by cos theta right 1 by cos theta minus 1 by instead of tan theta i'm writing it as sin theta by cos theta tan theta is nothing but sin theta by cos theta i hope this much is clear to you all okay now solving this by cross multiplying we get tan inverse of 1 minus cos theta divided by cos theta and sin theta by cos theta okay the numer i simplified the numerator it was 1 by cos theta minus 1 so uh, by cross multiplying we get 1 minus cos theta by cos theta and in the denominator it is uh, sin theta by cos theta okay now can we cancel these two we can cancel this cos theta right so it will become tan inverse of 1 minus cos theta by sin theta it is tan inverse of 1 minus cos theta by sin theta okay again you have to apply a trigonometric identity here okay 1 minus cos theta you have to apply a trigonometric identity that is you have uh, studied cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1 cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1 so if i take 1 here 1 plus cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta so i am making it half angle okay that is i am making the angle half okay half of that angle so 1 plus cos theta is equal to 2 cos square theta by 2 this is the uh, this is one more identity that you have to study that is half angle formula 1 plus cos theta is equal to 2 cos square theta by 2 similarly Uh, you have studied another formula or identity that was cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sin square theta so we can write 2 sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta so if we uh, find out the half angle it will become 2 sin square theta by 2 is equal to 1 minus cos theta so this is also you have to study 1 minus cos theta is equal to 2 sin square theta by 2 okay similarly you have all, uh, studied sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta okay considering the half angle 2 theta will become theta sin theta is equal to 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 this is another half angle formula so these three uh, these two uh, i have uh, derived three identities okay uh, these three identities are important in order to solve the problems of this section in this question itself we have to apply two of the identities that i have written here okay so here we uh, stopped here right tan inverse of 1 minus cos theta by sin theta we stop right here in order to apply the identity so i um, derived that identity that was uh, for 1 minus cos theta 1 minus cos theta is equal to 2 sin square theta by 2 instead of 1 minus cos theta we can write 2 sin square theta by 2 tan inverse of 2 sin square theta by 2 divided by instead of sin theta we can write we have already derived the formula sin theta is equal to nothing but 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 isn't it sin theta is equal to 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 so here i can write it as 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 
we can cancel 2 sin theta by 2. Isn't it? Here it is 2 sin square theta by 2. So, we can cancel 1 sin theta by 2 as well as this 2 also. Okay. So, this equation will become tan inverse of sin theta by 2 divided by cos theta by 2. Sin theta by 2 divided by cos theta by 2. What is that? Tan inverse of tan theta by 2. Tan inverse of tan theta by 2. Again, by using the property of inverse, we can write this as theta by 2. Isn't it? And what was theta? We put x is equal to tan theta. So, theta is equal to nothing but tan inverse x. So, in terms of uh, theta, we can write this as tan inverse x by 2. We can write this as tan inverse x by 2. Is that clear to you? So, this is the simplest form of the question. Okay, tan inverse of x by 2. Now, the second question is tan inverse of root of 1 minus cos x by 1 plus cos x. Tan inverse of root of 1 minus cos x by 1 plus cos x. The interval is given 0 less than x less than pi. Here also you can see that uh, the identity that we have derived earlier should be used. That is 1 minus cos x and 1 plus cos x. Here uh, it is not, the x is not an independent function. It is an angle. It is the angle of cos. So, we, we can't substitute directly for x. We can uh, directly apply the identity here, right? It is given as 1 minus cos x. So, we can directly apply the trigonometric identity. That is the half angle formula, right? Tan inverse of root of 1 minus cos x. Instead of 1 minus cos x, I can write this as 1 minus cos x is nothing but 2 sin square x by 2. This is the identity. 1 minus cos x is 2 sin square I x by 2. So, here we can write instead of 1 minus cos x, it is 2 sin square x by 2. Similarly, 1 plus cos x is nothing but 2 cos square x by 2. Okay, 1 plus cos x is nothing but 2 cos square x by 2. So, instead of 1 plus cos x, I am writing 2 cos square x by 2. Okay, now what happens is 2 and 2 gets cancelled. Then root of tan inverse of root of sin square x by 2 divided by cos square x by 2. Which means tan inverse of sin x by 2 divided by cos x by 2. Root of sin square x by 2 is sin x by 2 and root of cos square x by 2 is cos x by 2. Right. So what is this tan inverse of? tan of x by 2. Right. Tan inverse of tan of x by 2. By using the inverse trigonometry, property of inverse trigonometry, we can conclude thus, this as x by 2. Tan inverse of tan x by 2 is nothing but x by 2 itself. So, this is the simplest form. We started from here. Right. We started from here. That was tan inverse of root of 1 minus cos x by 1 plus cos x. By applying the trigonometric identity as well as the property of inverse, we got the simplest form of this particular question. What was that? X by 2. The simplest form of this particular question is X by 2. You will get problems based on this. Actually, this is important to find out the simplest form of uh, given uh, problem, right? I'll do one more problem. That is tan inverse of cos x minus sin x by cos x plus sin x. Tan inverse of tan inverse of cos x minus sin x by cos x plus sin x. Okay. That is minus pi by 4 less than x less than 3 pi by 4. The function is valid only in this domain. So, here what I am going to do is that, uh, I, you know, here outside you can see tan inverse. So, I have to, somehow I have to make this portion as in terms of tan. So, for that I am going to here, you can see sign and all. So, in uh, using sign we can uh, make, uh, we are going to make the 
uh, that portion uh, in terms of tan. Okay. So for that, I'm going to divide uh, the both numerator as well as the denominator by cos x. Dividing the whole numerator as well as the denominator by using cos x. Okay. That is by on uh, you write like this on dividing on dividing throughout numerator and denominator by cos x. So tan inverse of cos x by cos x minus sin x by cos x and denominator also cos x by cos x plus sin x by cos x. So here you can see that this value is 1, right? Cos x by cos x is 1. Similarly, this is also 1. So this and this is tan x, right? So tan inverse of 1 minus tan x, 1 minus tan x by 1 plus tan x. Tan inverse of 1 minus tan x by 1 plus tan x. Is that clear to you until now? We obtain tan inverse of 1 minus tan x by 1 plus tan x. Now I am going to write this 1 as tan pi by 4. Is that correct? The value of tan pi by 4 is 1, right? So in order to apply a trigonometric identity, I am uh, replacing this 1 with tan pi by 4. Okay, that is tan inverse of tan pi by 4 minus tan x minus tan x and here I am uh, writing this 1 itself 1 plus tan x into tan pi by 4. Have you understood this step? That is tan x into 1. Right. Here it was tan x into 1. So instead of that 1 I am giving tan pi by 4. This is simply we have to uh, apply the identity. Trigonometric identity. So I am uh, adjusting the values in such a way that we can apply the trigonometric identity here. This is uh, this can be uh, understood only, or uh, you can uh, understood this only by through practice. Okay, by practicing the question, you will get uh, how to adjust the values in order to get uh, the uh, bracket value as tan. Okay. So tan inverse of tan pi by 4 minus tan x by 1 plus tan x tan pi by 4. Is that equation similar to you, uh, familiar to you, a trigonometric identity? It is nothing but tan of x minus y. Right, tan of x minus y, we can write tan x minus tan y by 1 plus tan x tan y tan of x minus y is equal to tan x minus tan y by 1 plus tan x tan y. This is in that form, right? So we can write this as tan inverse of tan of pi by 4 minus x. Here you can see in terms of in the place of x is pi by 4 and in the place of y is x. So we can rewrite this identity as tan of pi by 4 minus x. So by using the inverse property, we can write this as pi by 4 minus x. This become identity. Tan inverse of tan will become identity. So uh, the value is pi by 4 minus x. So this is the simplest form of the question. We started from tan inverse of cos x minus sin x by cos x plus sin x. And we got, now we got the simplest form. That is nothing but pi by 4 minus x. Okay. We have some more problems in this section that we will continue tomorrow. I hope this is all clear to you. So I am uh, just winding up the session. Thank you.